Hey, Steve Mignani here doing the Junkyard Crawl in a private yard in the northeast of the United States. Uh, brought to you in part by High Octane Classics, Auburn, Massachusetts. Uh, now, today, Toyota is one of the world's biggest selling automakers. Well, 1958 was the first year for Toyotas in the United States. They were called Toyo Pets, and they sold by the hundreds. Now, 1966 saw 6,404 Toyotas sell in the United States a pittance, but they were coming on strong. By 1977, 440,000 Toyotas sold in the United States, and not a one of them had front-wheel drive. Let's remember that as the 1980s unfolded, Toyota went to front-wheel drive, but as this 1970 Toyota Corona Mark II proves, rear-wheel drive was the rule in subcompact cars at this point in time. Now, this is a Corona II, which is bigger than a Corolla, which had a 90 inch wheelbase. Corona had a 94 inch wheelbase and the Corona II had a 99 inch wheelbase. So the Corona and the Corona Mark II were sold side by side, 68 through about 73, 74. So again, when you see Mark II, you're looking at the longer wheelbase, again, 99 inches, which is about five inches longer than the basic Corona. Now this will have a four cylinder engine, no six cylinders in the Coronas or the Corollas. We'll get to ones that did have sixes in a second. But here we have the front of this in classic styling, four headlamps, plastic grill. This car spent a lot of its life in Connecticut. August of 74 apparently was its last uh, registration period. But under the hood, there we go. Okay, here it is. This is the uh, 1.9 liter single overhead cam Toyota, inline four. And we can see, well, okay, the rocker arms are in there, but no push rods here. The uh, cam followers and the rocker arms ride right on top of the camshaft for, uh, you know, more efficiency, I suppose. Uh, iron head on this one here, interesting. No aluminum heads, they'd arrive a little later on. Uh, this one has the aluminum intake with a two barrel, formerly carburetor. There is the oblong opening for the two barrel. And the Corona Mark II was a little upscale from the Corona optional power disc brakes. And again, disc brakes are standard on Corona 2s. Cool to see the original jack right there in its original spot, painted yellow for safety. Kind of a cool detail. And again, this thing apparently was last on the road around 74, 75, so very original under the hood. Uh, we see here the windshield washer squirter with the electric motor right there. Hit the switch, that thing goes, zzz, cleans your windshield for you. And again, our Corona Mark II has dual horns the Corona Mark I, or the base car only had a single horn. And of course, the grill is plastic, <laughs> which was kind of the wonder material of the uh, subcompact world. Whereas if you add made this out of steel, it'd be three times as heavy. So again, lightweight uh, and fuel economy went hand in hand uh, in Toyota, Datsun, Fiat, you name it. Uh, but again, we look at the front fender and here is the Corona Mark II. There are disc brakes that was standard on the Mark II Corona. And again, the Mark II with its 99 inch wheelbase was the only way to get a station wagon in your Corona. Now this is Consumer Reports right here with a nice review of the, uh, the Ford Maverick, the Duster, the Hornet, and the Corona Mark II, along with the Volkswagen and the Datsun. But inside of this, they give a pretty good review of it. Now this, of course, we see on the bottom left here, Corona Mark II. The Corona Mark II is a new Toyota entry. The Mark II line includes a four-door sedan, which we tested, a two-door hardtop coupe, and a four-door station wagon. Uh, they say it's well-equipped, and here on the right-hand side, one complaint. They say the heater controls are easy to reach, and a good thing, too, since we had to fiddle with the heater all too often. It was almost impossible to modulate the temperature. A tiny push on the control lever changed the heater output from full hot to full cold. The heater also discharges hot air directly onto the driver's right foot baking it. We finally left the heater on defrost, thus deflecting the air away from the foot. Now that was the opposite problem that the Volkswagen Beetle had, that air-cooled car with basically no heat. It was like a baby breathing on you. That was about as good as the Volkswagen heater got, but the Toyota Cor uh, Corona Mark II quite the opposite. But again, these are liquid cooled. Uh, one thing I love on this is a day two touch. This is very cool. Slotted aluminum mag wheels on the back. Probably been there since day one. And of course, Goodyear Polyglass E6014s. These subcompacts were so popular that 
Goodyear actually came up with a line of tires that were smaller, and companies like Appliance and Fenton came up with wheels, specifically with four lugs, 13 and 14 inches for the subcompacts. These were a big part of the automotive scene back in the day, as they are now still. Uh, here we have a Corona Mark II on the back, and uh, this, of course, is a station wagon. And again, if you want a Corona wagon, it's got to be a Mark II. The little basic car was too short, wasn't available as a wagon. So let's push the button and look inside. Okay, a spare engine. Look at this, another 1.9. And again, this uh, is a twin to the one up front. This one here with an air conditioning compressor, so it came off a, a loaded Corona Mark II. Clutch fan up front, this device right here. This is a thing that basically allows the clutch to freewheel or cool as needed, not sapping power. And this is an automatic. Here's the torque converter right here. A lot of these were, were manuals with a, a flywheel and a pressure plate, etc. But this is the automatic small diameter unit, which brings us here. Now, I mentioned earlier a six-cylinder engine in a Toyota. Well, the only way to get that in 1970 would have been to buy yourself a Toyota Crown. And there it is right there. And it says here, this is Car Life magazine, March 1970. Soak a BMW in hot water for two days and you have a Toyota Crown. In other words, would shrink down, but they liked it that much to compare it to a BMW. They say the Crown is a very conventional car in general. It's a step up from the Toyota Corona and Corolla in price and size and weight. One of the few things Cadillac and Crown have in common is that neither is faster nor more sporting than its lower priced brother. So I guess they were kind of complaining about the car, but there's that six banger right there. Same basic engine family as the 1.9 liter four, but this one here a little bit larger with, uh, what do we have here? One point, uh, it's a, yeah, 135 cubic inches in line six. So about 2.3 liters, something like that. But again, the uh, big six cylinder engine was never available in the, Corona Mark II, which would have been kind of cool, but again, the engine bay on this thing is just too short to accept that extra long six banger. So that's the story of how Toyota went from the Toyo Pet in 1958, selling hundreds of cars to millions of cars in the modern day. But again, before the front wheel drive thing came along in the early 80s, Toyotas were all about rear wheel drive. And this is a great example of cars that used to hit the road and be seen everywhere in New England when I was a kid. Well, now you find them here in the Boneyard, which is also a classroom. But if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the C-Mag's YouTube channel and stick around. There's lots more to come tomorrow morning.